The Clown Prince of Crime has rolled his way back through Gotham, and only Batman can stop him. All this and more on the pages of Detective Comics number 1008. Let's hop on it together and find out what happens next, shall we? So, as we join the comic, it's sundown, which means Batman is just about to begin his day as a crime fighter. Alfred brings him a strange invitation from the Joker. Apparently, Mr. J is hosting himself a carnival night, and he wants the guest of honor to be Batman. Naturally, of course. What's inspired this back-to-basics kind of villainy for the Joker, well, he mentions his time in the Legion of Doom, all the different crises, Lex Luthor sniffing at Godhood, but how at the end of the day, this is what really matters to him, man, you know, the work, putting in the work of just being a supervillain. In fact, pretty much everything about this plan is one giant Joker throwback to his earlier work. He's taken over a carnival and affixed people with a bunch of explosive bolo ties, asking only that they have fun and treat it like it's a real carnival, or else they die. So, alright, this this is clearly a trap the Joker has set for Batman, but what's he going to do once the Dark Knight shows up? Well, get this, he wants nothing more than just to hang out with Batman and have a fun carnival day. Joker says that they need to enjoy all the time they have together because there's no telling when a crisis or a cosmic who's a fudge will come down and ruin their fun. Batman is well aware that all of this is completely insane, but he also knows that he's going to have to play along with the clown if he wants to get closer to the detonator and save everybody. That means going on the roller coaster, the bumper cars, and naturally the tunnel of love. Ooh, Batman and the Joker have never really had a great history when it comes to the tunnel of love, huh? Eventually, the Joker brings our hero to what he considers the grand finale, the fortune-reading robot. Both of them get their fortunes told. For Joker, it says the sky is the limit. And and for Batman, it's something about fiery hearts being cooled. Batman takes this opportunity to grab the master switch off the Joker, but obviously the Clown Prince has a backup plan. Batman may be able to stop the bomb necklaces now, but the fortune-telling robot is also a big bomb, and if he doesn't disarm it, everyone's gonna die anyway. The Joker also hopes to use this chaos to escape via a bunch of balloons. Now, instead of taking to the skies after the villain, Batman opts to use a piece of his tech that he doesn't use all that much, the Bat Amplifier, which ends up attracting real bats from all over Gotham City who descend upon the Joker and shred his balloon, causing him to crash to the water below, where he will assumedly live to fight another day. It's also only here at the very end, too, we find out from Commissioner Gordon what the name of this theme park was. Well, it was Bolin Park, of course, after Brian Bolin, the man who drew the killing joke. Oh, but that's not all. We have one last little stinger here to tie into the year of the villain. Apex Lex recruits Mr. Freeze by giving him a bunch of money and resources to finally wake up his wife. Want to know how that went? Well, I guess you're going to have to pick up the next issue, aren't you? And so that was Detective Comics number 1008, everybody. And overall, I thought it was a pleasant, if unamazing, little throwback. It does indeed feel like every time the Joker shows up in a Batman story now, it's only part of some bigger event, and you know, he's got to be all operatic and over the top and you know, and maybe be a little quotable, but here Peter Tomasi just says, hey, what if this was just a regular old Joker story like the kind we would see in the Silver Age? He shows up, causes some trouble, and Batman has to stop him. The real star, though, I think we can all agree is Doug Mankey's artwork. Seriously, I love how twisted and horrible the Joker looks, yet also like something you could potentially see in real life as well. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one a 7 out of 10. If you want a nice little Batman throwback, I think this one will definitely scratch that particular particular itch. If not, though, you don't need to pick it up. Hey there, everyone. Cape Joel again. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not take a look at some of these other videos I have available from the channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're feeling in a charitable mood, why not check out my Patreon page? Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. So, until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel, and I will be continuing to make more comic book videos that smack of greatness. Bye-bye.